Um, ladies and gentlemen, the judges, the wine writers, Dr. James Ward and Old Dempsey, and the guys from Bradford down there, everyone that's here tonight, okay, thank you very much before I even go. Listen, this is a satire on Gulliver's Travels and on the good doctor. In the form of a communique between himself and Gulliver's visit to Trim, or his intended visit to Trim. And, um, it ends with an observation on the town itself and its people. That's you and me. So, when, when you're ready, timekeeper, I go. Lara Carr, County Me, Thursday, July 4. My dear Mr. Gulliver, your most recent discourse on travel into some of the more remote countries of the world made for an interesting account, though perhaps a more modest proposal would suffice. The strains on the imaginative process or the intellectual prowess required compared none too favourably with the outpourings of our own dear scribes, indeed paling to insignificance. And I can only suppose that you sucked on too many oranges or the egg returned. That said, however, the cover was excellent. Hallmark of the gifted amateur or pioneer who slipped out for the quiet one and wandered off into an extreme. Virginal territory, you might say. A veritable wasteland of form and set, though I find it most remarkable that you made no reference to type, given that the search party was out for days. Natural reserve may be all to the good, but an encounter with a port or shark can be terminal. And while I have no wish to append to the narrative or speaking of which, eternal vigilance is the watchword, prudence to be advised. Though musing on matters of such, you do well not to frighten the horses. The locals think poorly of you, and half a mind will set on you. Fingal has his cavalry out, and following on from your outbursts and bouts of depression, the town is not safe, and we view your impending arrival with dread, though of course you'd be most welcome, that and the usual restraints. I've staked out a few places, and what with the stand-up row and the odd banter, managed to secure you a good trollop, which given your interest in the wildlife, and once you get over the introductory phase and under the covers, there's bound to be something you can latch onto. In the grip of the most severe winter, we look after our own. The Hackney to Drumrito is out, and I'm forwarding you a copy of Travelling by Night and the Crepuscular for the Improver, which gives the position of every week and Tory that may be about and should be consulted before embarking on any other leg that might tie you between pillar to bedpost, but each to his own. <coughs> a man of your calibre needs no urging on that regard, and one way or the other is of small consequence. The rivers are easily fordable, and now that the grouse season is out, there seems little that would impede your progress. The laws of trespass more honoured by their breach than in the observance, but any diversion that will keep you off the road. However, feral cats abound, and while the ten toed saline are cut, the cougar is a most notorious predator, and should be approached with caution, or as might be expeditious to purpose, should you fall back on the parish or be brought up at the assizes for breaking gaps. An unlikely event in any case, and one so remote here is given the generosity of spirit, any Tom, Dick, or Harry will allow you out on someone else's land for half a crown. We live in straitened times and circumstance. Our best remedies come to naught or do wonders for the greyhound, the rub, I think it's called. And having ingested vast quantities or other substance, the ingredients of which I'm not at liberty to disclose, he lapsed into a stupor and passed, howling for Dunderry, out through the sheepscape, partial to the supplement, I suppose. Myself, I retired early. The fly are garlic and a little mead, a libation I have of some account and of late acquired, through the good office and under the auspices of that most august body, our local quack, a man of some standing when sober. Naturally enough, I took him with a pinch of salt and slept till dawn, awoke to the vile day, then out to the yellow steeple, the shawl he's selling breadcrumbs flogging the Mullingar Accord. Good morning to his ma'am, says I, laboring to get the tune out. Oh, difficult pudding right enough, says she, catering to all, the sheep were everywhere. And while the men had taken to painting themselves blue and would run in any wash, the women wore nothing at all and complained of the tax. Indeed, our very first utterance was off in my little pony, and content of a time that went side saddled to hounds, now bestrode the beast, and clamping spurs till our withers would go at a five bar gate, brooking no refusal. I, my lad, would you come up for others? How dare you feckin' refuse? Providence has deserted us. As to our health, the Cotoni Astros adorn the hedgerows and the ragwort is plentiful this year. I'm told it makes a fine broth to somewhat livery, and is most efficacious where income allows. On that note, our table is set. Yours, Swift of Lara Corr.